One of the paradoxes of subjectivity is that consciousness is unconscious. But what could this possibly mean? How is this not just meaningless postmodern gibberish? How can something be its very opposite? Well, when one begins to study the philosophy of subjectivity, it doesn't take long to realize that subjectivity, or self-consciousness, is one of the most enigmatic aspects of reality. It's where opposites meet, where paradoxes become alive. One of the paradoxes that define subjectivity is the identity of consciousness and the unconscious, or as Jacques Lacan put it, the Cartesian cogito is the Freudian unconscious. We have to clearly define our terms here. The cogito that Lacan is referring to is not Descartes' res cogitans, the thinking thing. Rather, it's what Lacan calls the barred subject, and what Zizek calls the void. It's a subject devoid of all contingent content and personality, reduced to a pure point of self-relating. To quote Zizek, one can see how in what precise psychoanalytical context Lacan's apparently nonsensical thesis according to which the Cartesian cogito is the very subject of the unconscious is grounded. For Lacan, the subject of the unconscious, the subject to be attributed to the Freudian unconscious, is precisely this empty point of self-relating, not a subject bursting with a wealth of libidinal forces and fantasies." Unquote. Zizek's Lacanian understanding of the Freudian subject has led him to critique Jean-Paul Sartre, who, reje who rejected Freud's concept of the unconscious entirely. However, my belief is that Sartre and Zizek don't have any real disagreement here but beyond mere terminological confusion, and this is because, at least from my reading, Sartre's pre-reflective cogito is essentially Zizek's void of self-relating. To quote Sartre, It is not reflection which reveals the consciousness reflected onto itself. Quite the contrary, it is the non-reflective consciousness which renders reflection possible. There is a pre-reflective cogito which is the condition of the Cartesian cogito." Unquote. Now, while Sartre does distinguish his pre-reflective cogito from the Cartesian cogito, this is simply because he understands the latter as the self that is transparent to itself while Zizek follows Lacan in identifying the cogito with the unconscious or pre-reflective void. Now, the pre-reflective cogito must be pre-reflective or else we're led into a spurious infinity of consciousness becoming conscious of itself. There has to be a point where consciousness no longer reflects on itself, a point which is the very origin of the reflecting, that which can't be included within the field of consciousness. Thus, the zero level, the very core of self-consciousness, is unconscious or pre-reflective, and this is the subject. It must be emphasized that because the subject, as the pre-reflective void, can't become transparent to itself, it's always outside of, of reality, outside the field of representation. To quote Zizek, it is a little bit too easy to say that the viewer doesn't see the world, he is part of a world process. In some radical sense, I am never directly part of the world in which my perception takes place, since every reality that I perceive already relies on my specific subjective standpoint. By definition, I cannot di directly locate myself in reality, since this would mean that I somehow stepped out of myself and looked at myself objectively from nowhere. This means that I, as a subject, am not directly part of the world. I, of course, have no substantial reality out of the world, but I am the void that enables the constitution of a specific reality in the midst of a chaotic, unorientable, real." Unquote. And thus, to conclude, the Cartesian cogito is the Freudian unconscious because the former isn't the self-transparent thinking thing, and the latter isn't the substantial abyss of passions and desires. Both terms re refer to the self-relating, pre-reflective void. This void, as the zero level of representation, can't be included within the field of representation,
It's the subtraction which makes the constitution of a positive phenomenal reality possible. This is why I, as the void, can never find my place within reality. I'm always speaking from the outside.